It's Roy Candy from Epic Gaming Night, and this is my top 100 games. We're getting higher and higher up on my list, and I took a look back to see how many games in my list as a whole were from 2016 last year. There's 13 games in total, so it's kind of interesting to think about the, all the new games that are coming out. 13 is a decent amount out of 100 that made my top 100. So I just think it goes to show that better and better games are coming out, and some of the best games are still yet to be made. So I'm definitely excited for the future of gaming, and let's go Go ahead and get to my top 100. My number 60 is Cash and Guns. This is a great game that plays with a bunch of different people where you have these foam guns and you're trying to figure out how to split up the loot after a heist. And you have to choose the player you're going to point the gun at and you have to decide whether or not you're going to put a, a actual bullet in the gun or just have it be a click. And it's all like this meta game of trying to figure out who's the winner, figure out when to like take someone out and figure out when to duck out of the thing. But also trying to make sure that you have enough money to successfully win the game. This is a great game with a lot of different people in a party atmosphere and it's always fun when it's like, oh my gosh, they're all pointing the gun at me or oh my goodness, like he pointed the gun at me last turn, maybe I should point at him, but I know this guy's winning, so I'm gonna point at him instead. Guys, why are you pointing at me? I'm not the guy who's winning. And there's lots of back and forth in this game and it's super interesting and the expansions make it a lot more fun too. So make sure to check out Cash and Guns, my number 60. My number 59 is one of those new games I was talking about and it's a real time game that's crazy and frantic and that is Captain Sonar. This is a game where you split into two different teams. It's kind of like Battleship because you're trying to find the other submarine but you have all sorts of different people in different teams. You have the guy who's doing the, like the sonar and as their captain's telling them the directions they're trying to write down on the paper and figure out where where they are based on whether they went around an island or they, they couldn't have gone over here. And then you have the captain who's barking out the orders of which direction to go and when to fire the missiles and when to shoot the, the drones out and deploy the sonar. And then you have the, um, the person who's the first mate just checking off the different pieces, trying to load the different weapons and the different modules so that way you can do all sorts of different special abilities. And then you have the engineer who's trying to not damage the ship as they're doing all the different things and make sure that they are checking off on the path and telling when to surface so that way you won't take damage. There's all sorts of exciting things in Captain Sonar and it's completely real time and frantic as you're going back and forth, kind of like this hidden movement game where you're both hiding and trying to figure out where the other player is so you can drop mines and torpedoes on them. It's a blast to play and that's why it's my number 59, Captain Sonar. My number 58 is another head-to-head -head card game, Ashes Rise of the Phoenixborn. This is a game where each player is playing a Phoenixborn and they have a deck of cards, but they have dice as their resources. And this is a game that I think is very interesting because in Magic the Gathering, you start with a little bit of mana or whatever and build up. In this game, you have all these resources and you have to figure out how to best spend it on your turn. And the cards are very different. The art is amazing on this game and it is a whole lot of fun to play. Deck build and there's lots of Phoenixborn you can mix and match to make the deck that you want. And that's why my number 58 is Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Board. My number 57 is Mage Knight. This is a fantasy adventure game where your player's running around the board trying to take out enemies, gain reputation, and get experience points to unlock new abilities. There's all sorts of different modes you can play this game in, and it's a great solo game. So that's why my number 57 is Mage Knight. My number 56 is a game that emulates the collectible card game lifestyle, and that's Millennium Blades. This is a game where you're playing in real time, trying to buy up packs and do all sorts of different things so that you can build a deck and then play in tournaments. And then you're also trying to build a collection at the same time. It's very interesting. I love real time games and I love the feel of throwing down these giant wads of cash to like buy the different booster packs and trying to figure out how to combo those cards together in real time to build your deck and see if you can play that out and interrupt the other player's strategies as well while you're playing the game. That's why my number 56 is Millennium Blades. My number 55 is Clank. This is a great press your luck deck building game. And it's a deck building game in the fact that you do all the stuff that you would do with normal deck building games, but this also has a board component where you're moving your character down. You're trying to get different treasures in this dungeon, but as you do things, you're making clank so that way there's noise and then the dragon can find you and it'll end up doing damage to your character. So you're trying to survive while you're down there, but you also have to get back out before your character dies. And it's a race to like press your luck and then get out and figure out who can get the most points. You wanna to try to get just enough points so that you can beat the other players, but not push too far so that way your character gets killed. So that's why 55 is clank. My number 54 is Werewolf. This is like the old school social deduction game. It's great because there's 
players that are trying to be werewolves and hide from the other players so they don't know who you are. Then you have the villagers, the seer, and the hunter, and several different crazy roles that are trying to find the werewolves and kill them. Every night, the werewolves are going to kill off somebody, and during the day, you have to argue with your friends and try to figure out who the werewolves are so that way they can be lynched. There's a moderator that has to go around and facilitate the story and the rules of the game, but this game is great, and it works with huge groups. I've had a ton of success like playing this in like work events and things like that. So I love Werewolf and that's why it's my number 54. My number 53 takes a lot of that same Werewolf experience and puts it down to 10 minutes. That's One Night Ultimate Werewolf. This is a great game where everybody has roles and there's an application that helps run the game for you. So there's no more need for a moderator for the game so everyone can join in. And there's all sorts of like switching of roles and like you knew you were the Werewolf but now your role might have switched or maybe you were the troublemaker and you get to mix things up and like you have information that some people's things got switched and you're trying to like pay attention to all the different like movements and like what people are saying to try to figure out who's who because you only have 10 minutes to figure it out and get rid of the werewolves. So it's a crazy exciting 10 minute game and that's why one Night Ultimate Werewolf is my number 53. My number 52 is Masquerade. This is a game that's like a giant shell game where you're trying to figure out the different roles, being able to call out your role. Sometimes you can bluff which role you have in front of you, but you'll have a role of a character, and at the beginning of the game, you have to like mix all those different roles up. And you're allowed to call out your role, but if someone calls you on that, and they're that role instead, then they'll get to do the special ability instead. And the first person to get the right amount of gold wins the game. This game's crazy fun, and that's why I love Masquerade, and it's my number 52. My number 51 is Robo Rally. This is a game of programming robots trying to get to different checkpoints on the board, but you're having to program your character sort of in real time because you don't want time to run out, and you're trying to figure out where well, if I go here and on the conveyor belt, and if I like go here and hopefully this guy doesn't push me, and other players always can come into the mix and push your guy out of the way and mess up your plans. It's a lot of crazy zany fun, and the more players you play it with, the more chaotic and crazy it is, and that's why I love Robo Rally. My number Number 51. So we made it halfway through my top 100. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey all the way to the very top of my favorite games. I think it's interesting that with so many new games coming out, there's still a lot of really great older games. And there's some games that I really like that came out even before I was born. So we'll have to save that for next time, but hopefully I'll see you then on my top 100. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.